All right. Uh, so in this presentation, we're, uh, we're really going to cover two different approaches to making a tone on the trumpet. Uh, this is for people who are just starting out trying to get their very first tone on the trumpet, in addition to people who have already established their, their sound on the trumpet a little bit, um, because you, we're always looking to improve our tone, right? Uh, no matter how long you play, how many years you play, we're always looking for ways to improve our trumpet tone. So uh, I've got two di different approaches that I'm going to talk about. And um, we are, I'm also going to talk about the opening of uh, Live Academy. And Live Academy is the program that I've been running on eTrumpetLessons.com. It's something that most people haven't heard much about. The last time I opened this for, uh, for new students was two years ago. Uh, what it is is my uh, live video conferencing one-on-one -on -one trumpet lessons. So just as you can imagine, um, I, there's only a certain number of hours in the day and a certain number of students that I can, that I can entertain. Uh, in my schedule. So I don't open that very often, but I am uh, opening it uh, now, and I'm going to bring present some information about that program as well. Anyway, um, so a little bit about me, first of all. Um, I'm kind of a lifetime trumpet player. Uh, I started off playing trumpet as a little kid. Good. Thank you, Glenn. I saw that. Uh, I started off playing as a little kid when I was, I don't even remember, honestly, 10 years old, something like 11 or 12. A little bit before uh, before school started in uh, before public band started in middle school, uh, my parents, you know, had the good sense. I don't know if it was good sense or they were just trying to keep me out of trouble, but got me started with a trumpet teacher when I was uh, a young kid. And at that time, of course, kids don't understand the importance of that or, or what that all means. But uh, I truly, to this day, recognize the value of those trumpet lessons that started. It, that I started way back then because it really started me off on the right foot, made sure I had a good foundation of trumpet playing, and everything I learned from early on, I could build on then. So, um, you know, I played on through high school, through college. I played in, you know, big bands, jazz bands, classical, um, uh, musicals, operas, things like that. Gosh, uh, I started doing church services. Uh, weddings, uh, local, you know, I sat in with the local symphony, things like that. There were a lot of opportunities that opened up to me as a trumpet player. Um, yeah, I was good. I wasn't great. I wasn't one of those guys that's superstar, you know, destined for the, for the spotlight. Um, but I was good enough to hold my own and play technically professionally. Yeah, I got paid for, for playing, but I wasn't, was never a full-time professional trumpet player. But I had a lot of opportunities that opened up to me as a result of my ability, and, and some of it wasn't, again, being so good, but it was really a matter of being in the right place at the right, right time. You know, I got to, I got to uh, play with various uh, celebrities when they might come through and play and, uh, and uh, be featured with the symphony orchestra, something like that. Um, they sent me to Washington, D.C. to play for various events for the, uh, the U.S. presidential inauguration activities. So, yeah, I was a solid player, though. Not superstar, but good enough to hold my own. And the reason I emphasize that is you don't have to be the greatest player in the world uh, to have some good opportunities and actually just enjoy playing the trumpet. You just need some solid skills that's good enough for you. Right now, um, I'm not playing professionally anywhere. I almost never play weddings. I, I was fortunate I was to be able to play my sister's wedding. Uh, you know, right now, most of my enjoyment comes from playing right here in my own house for my uh, little kid. He's in elementary school, and he thinks dad's the greatest trumpet player in the world. So that's a nice endorsement to have there, and that's really where my joy comes from. Um, so onward with the topic of today. We're talking about two ways to make a tone on the trumpet. And um, there's actually various discussions online and, and in chat groups and, and among various uh, trumpet teachers about the right way to make a tone. And there's kind of two schools of thought, and usually trumpet teachers will, will join one school or another. I personally believe that there's not one that's the right way and one that's the wrong way. Uh, my experience tells me that people people can hear the same message but they hear it two different ways and one way is going to make more sense to them than the other way so for that reason and that reason alone I don't fully endorse one school or the other 
I just say here's two approaches and if it makes sense for you you know grab onto that and take it and write it for as much as it's worth get as much as you can out of that approach because it's all it's all how you interpret things up here that determines how it all comes out on the other end of the trumpet so the two approaches are the buzz and the no buzz approach um, you know the buzz basically means <coughs> So you can hear an audible buzz, and the no buzz approach is just blowing without making a sound. Um, they, they're seemingly contradictory, but by the time you add the mouthpiece and the trumpet behind it, the, the action of that aperture right here is very, very similar between the two approaches. Before we get started, I wanted to talk about just a little bit of terminology. I'm going to use two terms. One is embouchure, and the embouchure refers to the group of muscles right around here the musicians tense up and, and actually control the sound when they play the other word is the hole right there in the center where the air escapes that's aperture so I'm gonna be talking about embouchure and aperture so just clear clarify right up front the two distinctions so on the buzz approach the goal is actually to make a buzzing sound with your lips just like I demonstrated the idea and the concept is the faster your lips vibrate, the higher the pitch. The lower, the slower they vibrate, vibrate, the lower the pitch. So my lips are vibrating relatively slowly and relatively quickly. Um, and I don't want you to get too hung up on on this concept right now. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit more as we go along. And and the reason I say don't get hung up on it because some people, for some people, that just comes naturally. Um, I've had students that walk in and I say, can you, can you do this? And they say, great, enough said, let's move onward. Um, other people, they struggle with that and they just can't do it. Even play trumpet players that have been playing for a few years tell me I still have trouble and I can't buzz. I can play, uh, I can play a tone on the trumpet, but I can't buzz. So um, just in case it comes naturally to you, I'd like you to just give it a try if you haven't already. You're just going to set the corners of your embouchure. Take a big breath. And a nice long tone. So hopefully you did okay there. Let me add a little bit more detail about, uh, about what's going on here. The position of your embouchure in this approach is, is a very natural position. Don't try to contort your face or screw it up, anything like that. The, the very initial setting is if you is if you is as if you're saying this the sound m m so i'm going <laughs> to i'm going to zoom in and out with my with my camera here m mm. so you can see it's just a natural set um, after you've got that that m position you want to make sure that your your cheeks are tight against the gums and your teeth all the way around your mouth mm. Right, M, blow. If that if that tissue isn't tight, then everything can just collapse. So this is the integrity of your embouchure, starting from back here and right around here. After you have that set, you'll want to take a big breath, and as you blow out, you want to keep your lips tight enough that that air is just going to eke out and cause those lips to vibrate. <laughs> Okay. Now I hope you're doing this with me at home. Um, so please, please do participate. This is how you're going to get the most out of that. So, as you try this, what happened? There's a few possibilities. Um, the one possibility is next to nothing. You get your lips together and you're, and, and nothing's happening. In this case, there's a couple possibilities. One is your lips could be clamped down just too tight really pressing down and the idea is you don't want to press tight you just want to have a firm embouchure that that air can escape out the aperture um, and it's kind of a it's kind of a strange concept because you're you're tensing all of the muscles around here but taking just a very small area and, and making that relaxed and supple it's it's kind of like um, if somebody asked you to make a fist really tight but relax just that little pinky right it takes a little bit of practice um, you do want to keep the corners of the front, corners of the embouchure nice and firm. Uh, one analogy I've heard people say is imagine you're holding toothpicks here, something like that. But again, you don't want to contort your lips too much. It should look, as you look in the mirror, 
mostly natural, like that. Um, and it does, and I can't overemphasize this enough, it does require a big breath, okay? A big breath and a forceful blowing out of that breath. It needs a lot of air, so once more. <laughs> tight in the corners, the cheeks are in tight, and I've taken a big breath and blown it out uh, hard. Along with that, I'm keeping a nice, loose, uh, a little bit supple aperture there. Okay, so another possibility uh, when you do your, your buzz is um, the air comes out, but you're not getting buzz, all right? Kind of a... Now, if this happens to you, I don't want you to discard that because that's going to maybe make, if, if that feels comfort, comfortable to you, then that means that that no buzz approach that I'm going to get to here in a few minutes might be uh, the approach that's going to make the most sense for you. So don't, don't be too quick to discard that if that happens. But if that's happening, some possibilities are that your lips are not firm enough. Okay, You've got to have the corners of these nice and tight and once again a little bit supple right at the, in the center. So if you're doing all of that, if you feel like you're doing all of those things right and you're still not getting that buzz, try tightening down a little bit right here at your aperture. Make that aperture just a little bit, uh, a little bit smaller. So the other thing that you might do is uh, slightly uh, moisten your lips a little bit. I tend to play on a fairly wet embouchure. Other people play pretty dry. But if you're just not getting that moisture, if you're just not getting the buzz, sometimes a little bit of moisture can help set that buzz in motion. So, um, let's see. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention is there's also a warm up effect on this. A lot of people say they come to me and first right off they they bring up their trumpet and they hold it up and and they say I just don't get it. I can't get it. Well that might be the first time that trumpet has come and touched their face in two weeks or maybe ever. Um, and there is a warm-up effect, not to mention just the developmental, uh, the development of your tone and your embouchure. So uh, understand that there is a warm-up effect. Keep at it just because you can't do it the first time right off the bat doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything wrong. Every trumpet player comes in and we warm up first. Um, Okay, so another possibility when you make that when you make that trumpet tone is is, is that you get the um, uh, like a squeak, and some people will say. So when that happens, um, there's a couple of things that you need to do. One is make sure you've taken a, a big breath and you're blowing strong, consistent air. So right, don't don't pinch it down. The other thing that I see sometimes people do is they'll roll their 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 lips under their teeth, kind of a I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so you're playing on the they're they're trying to buzz the the lips. For me, and and granted, uh, everybody's uh, anatomy is a little bit different different, but for me, that buzz, that point where my top and my bottom lip come together is right about at the point on both on each lip where the dry part meets the wet part underneath if that makes sense the idea is you're not rolling those lips underneath the teeth okay so just <laughs> lips stay on the outside of the teeth so as if somebody if somebody punched you right here in the chin it would hurt but you would have teeth against teeth not teeth biting into the lips um and again, you can wet the lips a little bit, and there's also a warm-up effect as well. So, um, but consistent practice, keep doing it, and you're going to get that warm-up effect, and your lips are going to become warm and then more supple. The last thing I'm going to say on, on the, uh, the buzz approach is uh, some people get a really wet, spitty kind of a buzz, kind of a... Okay, so... If that's you, make sure that you're not pucker, right? You want to you want to use you want to have a pretty flat surface right here on your lips. So, if you look in the mirror, and that's something I recommend all the or right by your practice stand, make sure that you've got a nice flat embouchure. You're not 
you know, it's not a pucker up like you have to kiss your Aunt Tilly kind of thing. Just, and if you feel like you are puckering, try, and I, I know I said don't roll your, your lips under your teeth, and I'm not saying that now, but try just rolling your lips in just slightly so that, so that you've got just a little bit less of the wet part showing. Um, and it's, it's almost as if you're saying, like, uh, So, anyway, if those ideas make sense, uh, please go forward with that, and 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 that's that's essentially the the buzz approach. Now, s some people just say, well, um, you know, why why am I not getting it? And some possibilities might be that your lips just aren't supple enough, right? Um, the buzz is difficult coming, and, and it happens to me also, especially if I'm not warmed up, especially if I'm sunburned, if I've got chapped lips, anything like that. Keep working at it. Um, try adding the mouthpiece also to add just a little bit of stability. So it's kind of a strange, a strange sound to make on your trumpet, but when you add the mouthpiece, well, I won't blow right into the mic. The mouthpiece helps kind of add a little bit of integrity to the embouchure. It helps focus the sound, but it helps hold things in place right in here. Make sure that you're not pressing with it, and same thing especially when you add the trumpet. You're not adding pressure, you're just setting that on there. So that might help as well. Um, the last thing is, this is this is not a natural sound for most people to make on the trumpet. Just like people who didn't grow up in a Spanish-speaking family don't necessarily... Uh, <laughs> can't comfortably make that rolling the R sound that R, R, R kind of thing. So it just takes some practice, keep at it. Um, and, and the one thing that I said once and it bears repeating because it's so important is make sure you've got plenty of air pressure. You've got plenty of air support. So always, always a big breath. Um, now how often should you do this? If you're working on your tone or if you're just, especially if you're just starting to make your tone, um, daily, right? Absolutely daily. You don't have to spend a long time at it and it doesn't really have to interfere with your schedule, but five to ten minutes at a time, two to even five times a day, maybe more, without the trumpet is what I'm talking about. Um, I, I really encourage people who are new to the trumpet to take this for, um, you know, four to five days, um, even more. Just focus just on that, just on that tone. Perfect. Um, so practice that. Add the mouthpiece. Practice that. Just, just the buzz, the buzz alone. Just the mouthpiece alone, and you will make progress with that. I mentioned also at the beginning. This is the launch for the Live Academy program. Uh, that's the my private one-on-one -on -one lessons program. Um, you've heard me talk about my students throughout this presentation, and and if you've been getting my emails as well. For the vast majority of the time, I'm talking about these students that have enrolled in the Live Academy, and I wanted to tell you just a little bit about that. Um, the format of that is very similar to this presentation. Now, it's interesting that we have the technical difficulties in this presentation uh, because of, occasionally it happens online as well, but um, boy, I'd say 9 out of 10, more than 9 out of 10, I'd say 19 out of 20 times. It runs pretty smooth. Um, worst case scenario, we just have to take a quick timeout, do a reset, we log back in, and we're live again face to face. Um, so basically, I we we listen to you play. I learn about what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve on your trumpet, and and I'll give you immediate feedback, help you out with your goals, give you some assignments. You go off and practice for a bit. You come back a week later, and we do the same thing over again. The uh, format of the Live Academy is a five pack of lessons. So when you sign up, you have a bank of five lessons. You can use them. Most people use them once a week for 30 minutes. Uh, they're 30 minute sessions. Nothing says we can't put two of them back to back and, um, and, and get one full hour if, if that's what we're looking for. But in general, it's half an hour a week and we really focus on one thing at a time. And that thing, let's say it might be tone, for example, uh, tied into what we're talking about today. I would give you assignments and musical assignments that would really allow you to focus on your tone and, and learn some music and some songs and some exercises that are really going to help you focus in and listen to your tone and really develop that. So that's kind of what that looks like. But who's it for? Um, it's basically for anyone who's looking help with their trumpet playing. And um, 
looking for a little bit faster and more efficient improvement than what they've experienced so far. A lot of uh, it's not just for the youngsters. A lot of people who first start playing the trumpet are you know 13, 12, 11, 10 years old. But the reality is, I have a lot, a ton of a ton of uh, my trumpet students are in or nearing retirement. Um, people who have just used to play the trumpet a long time ago and wanted to pick it up or people who have always been interested in the trumpet and never did start playing. And, and so they look me up and we get going. Um, they can take their lessons in the convenience of their own home and goes like gangbusters. I have one student who's, gosh, I think he turned 74, uh, Harold, and he thinks, he thinks he's by far my oldest student. Don't tell him that there's others right there knocking on, the, on his door because that's kind of his little point of pride. Uh, point being, it's for anybody who really is looking for the convenience of, for conveniently getting some good quality trumpet instruction and, and getting some, some tools that you can kind of have under your belt to keep progressing as a trumpet player. Um, I'm going to give you the link for that immediately following this presentation. If you're interested, you can sign up there. I definitely encourage it. Um, you can sign up for the five pack. If you like how things are going, you can re-enroll, re-up for another five pack of uh, five pack of lessons and keep that up. Um, or you can say, yep, one pack is all I need and it's good and I've got some things and I'm going to go up and study that and maybe we can look at it again down the line. So that's fine. Um, back to the, the buzz. So the idea of a buzz sound produced by is the idea that a buzz is produced by your lips amplified by your mouthpiece, or focused by your mouthpiece rather, and then amplified through the trumpet is, it's a logic that most people can follow. They say, yep, sound here, goes through some processing, and results in big sound out here at the end of the instrument. But with the no buzz technique, that's a little bit harder to understand. You know, how can you go and produce a sound at the end of the trumpet? And again, I don't want you to get too hung up on this. Don't worry about, you know, it, it has something to do with the, the physical laws of pipe dynamics and resistance of air against a wave or something like this. I'm not even going to pretend that I know what I'm talking about. All I know is there's a technique that can be really helpful in establishing a tone on the trumpet if you can't go and even if you can do that, it's a great way to help open up your sound sometimes to make, make a little bit bigger, cleaner, wider sound. So for the no buzz technique, it, it starts with the same the same embouchure set. Uh, the, the corners are tight in here, cheeks firm against the gum and the teeth, and, and also a big breath as well. But the idea is, imagine you're having tea with the queen, maybe. You're, or if you're English, I don't mean any offense here, but, but uh, you've got your tea and you're drinking in a little cup and maybe you've got your finger out and it's hot. So you're going to blow on it, kind of a... Right? You don't, you're not blowing hard, like, and you're not <laughs> definitely buzzing at it. It's just a soft. But notice how when you do this, you do have a little bit of tension right here at the corners, and you got a wide open aperture. So the idea that we're getting at is to take that motion, narrow down the aperture, increase the airflow that's coming up from your lungs, so you've got a nice stream of air coming out. So I don't need to shove my hands right in the camera. But try this right now. Take take a big breath, firm up the corners a little. If you find that the air is coming down here, right, make sure that you're not doing a little bit of an overbite. Try to keep that air going straight out in front of you. Once you get that, increase the force of the air as it, as it comes up and out that aperture. So take a bigger breath and push it through there faster. Notice how when I blow, my breath is lasting about five seconds, give or take. Just blow until your air runs out. Once more. Okay, so you're going to keep these corners firm again. And as you do this, you've got good resistance here. You're going to hear a bit of wind, definitely. And that's basically it. Uh, you repeat this 50 times, 100 times, what do you say? 50 times? Yeah, I'm not really kidding. Um, it really does just kind of take that, that much time. You're going to, as you start doing this, you may feel a little bit of lightheaded if you're going, <laughs> but again, try to take a deep breath. 
and blow. If you're taking deep breaths and blowing fully and taking short breaks in between, you're, you're not going to be in any danger of passing out, I'm sure. Um, do this for about 10 or 20 minutes at a time, just kind of like the other buzz, a uh, little, little bit of a uh, ninja hack or a little ninja, ninja trick so that you can practice this anytime. Um, if you're watching TV, take the commercial breaks. And in fact, with the no buzz, <laughs> no buzz approach, you need to even do that during your program. It's not too noisy. What you're probably going to find out is as you do this, this is going to start to warm up. This little, the aperture right in the center is going to be a little bit supple, and you're likely to find out that eventually you're going to inadvertently make a buzz. Right? If you find that happening, that's uh, that's good in a way because it means you're doing exactly thing things the right way. But I don't want you to start into that buzz when you start. When you start getting from the air converting to the buzz, open up that aperture a little bit wider so that it's oops. The idea is that you want this as wide open as you can without creating a buzz, right? Just just wider than it would be if you then it would then it would uh, cause you to create a buzz. The next step you can do from there is to take the mouthpiece, just the mouthpiece of your trumpet and push that air, the no, the no buzz, through the mouthpiece. Right? Again, I'm not looking for a buzz, but as you do this repeatedly, it's likely that at some point a buzz is just going to start, it's going to drop in. That's right? So you might be going along 5, 6, 7, 8, 14, 15 times, and pretty soon you hear Okay. Once again, that's a good sign. It means you're getting warmed up. It means that your aperture is becoming more supple. But still, I want you to open that up a little bit farther so you're not quite getting that buzz. Okay. So literally, no buzz. Your lips are not vibrating. You're just pushing that air through the trumpet. The next step is add the trumpet. At this point, if, you, if you're using just the mouthpiece and you're letting just air go through and just keeping your aperture open just enough so that it won't buzz, when you add the trumpet, that's what's, that, that's what's gonna supply the resistance or whatever the physical part of it that I told you don't worry about happens, and that, that tone is probably just gonna fall out. <sighs> As you get that tone, don't be too quick to stop and say, I got it. Once you get that tone, hold it out and see if you can manipulate that a little bit. You, you, can, you have very, very fine control over your lip muscles. So once you get that tone, you can still work on holding the tone and opening your, your aperture a little bit more. <laughs> Once you get that tone, hold that as long as you can. Right? Again, it requires a big breath in advance. Hold it out and hold it as long as you can sustain that tone on your trumpet. This is, the, what I've just described, is the first probably five minutes of your warm-up. Right? Assuming you can already make a tone and you've got other things that you're practicing. That's the first session of your warm-up, five to ten minutes, just getting that tone established. Um, a lot of times what I'll do before I even come, before I even reach my practice studio is I'll start. So that's what you can do to prepare yourself for practice. Um, now, why does it work? Again, I don't know, and I encourage you to not worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about the physical parts of it. You don't have to understand it, just like you don't have to understand why the light comes on when you turn the switch or why the light goes off in the refrigerator when you close the door. The other thing that a lot of people will, will approach me with when I talk to them about these two different ways is they say, well, okay, that's all fine and good, Brett, but which one is the best? And again, I don't want to say which one is best 
because the real answer is whichever side, whichever approach you have the most success with, the buzz or the no buzz approach. If you're getting success with the buzz, great. One reason that I do present the no buzz approach to my students who have already been playing for a while and have already got a good trumpet sound or have got a trumpet tone going is that that no buzz approach forces that aperture to open up and it ensures that, that you're not pinching right here at the aperture so your lips aren't clamping down together. That can happen especially as we get tired, um, our endurance starts dropping off, we start pinching and that means your tone gets a little bit tighter. And that's what you want to avoid. You want to have as big and nice and open a sound as you <clears throat> as you can. So again, if if that approach is new to you, I really recommend that you take several days a week, maybe even two weeks. Just start in your in your spare time whenever you can think about it. Try that no buzz approach and see how that does for you. So that's it. That's the the buzz approach, the no buzz approach. Let me know in your comments if if one of those seems to make sense for you or doesn't make sense for you or if you say if you think Brett that's just crazy I don't get it um, I'll be happy to entertain some questions there um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you a little bit more information about the live Academy so again the live Academy is a five pack of lessons and you can just schedule these lessons at your own convenience in the lessons, you get one-on-one -on -one attention. This is, I, I'm your personal teacher to help you out with your technique, your practice approach. I want to help you be as efficient as possible in your practice. Nobody wants to be wasting time, right? A lot of times I hear from new people, uh, even people that have bought my video program, and they say, well, the video library of lessons is great. Um, there's lots of information there. I just don't know where to, pra you know, where to start. I need some feedback on what I'm doing. And that's where this uh, program really comes in, into play and is, is a strong point of it. And you can ask me the questions, anything that you might be struggling with. Um, a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, I've got this song that I really want to learn to play. Can you help me? Great. That comes down to just understanding the goals of my students and making sure that we're both on the same page. We've got real-time feedback to maximize your efficiency. Again, nobody wants to waste time in their practice. We want to get the most out of every minute that we spend in our practice on the trumpet. Part of that program is an online notes program. And as we go through our trumpet lesson session, at the conclusion of it, I'm going to write down and summarize the notes of things that we've done. I post those notes publicly, not publicly, but privately online, accessible to the student 24-7. Uh, there's a screen share feature that I use all the time as well. One of the disadvantages of not being there live is I can't just um, you take my finger and point to a section in the in the in the sheet music that we're looking at. So what I can do is uh, online or on our display, I can just share my screen, kind of like I'm doing right now, and point out things in music. It makes it really easy for us to communicate, almost as if we were there live, side by side. The materials that we use are either your own. Uh, if you're in a school band program and you've got material there, great, I can help you with that. If you have other material that you're working on, just some goal, uh, some songs that you just always wanted to play, definitely I want to help you with that. Before we start, I do do a test session to ensure that we've got the right uh, video cameras and the and the right microphones on, on both sides so that there's not going to be any um, oh, glitches. <laughs> and uh, based on today, this is uh, certainly as bad as it gets. So, But uh, we'll do that, and, and of course, that session doesn't count as one of the five sessions. That's just a prelim to make sure that we're, we're on the right page. The lessons are held in your home uh, for your own convenience. If you travel, I have a couple of students actually that travel quite a bit, and I've done lessons um, to students in their hotel rooms. So all you need is an internet connection, and we can be together. So, so what's the tuition for the Live Academy? What does it cost? The five pack of lessons is $97. And this is a discount from $127. As uh, my schedule fills up again, I'm going to close out the program. And then as it opens, I will leave it available to fill in. Maybe I'll be filling in from waiting lists. And at that point, the price will be $127. So right now, $97 for this uh, sort of re grand opening special. Uh, the enrollment is open until the schedule is full and the schedule really I can't say exactly how many students that is because it really depends on how the how the scheduling falls together um, if you are in another country another state you don't have the same time zone as me not a problem I've got students um, and have managed it all over the world um, England Australia even um, even 
there, there's always a time someplace that we can match up and it fits both our schedules. So not to worry about there. Some of the students that I have um, have sent in some comments. Uh, one says, my trouble playing is improved beyond recognition. Thanks entirely to Brett's great patience and encouragement. You know, I ask people when they give me compliments, say, hey, you know what, would you mind just put, give me something, some kind of endorsement I can put out there? And some people maybe go a little bit overboard. So improved beyond recognition um, may be an overstatement, <laughs> but uh, a, a point of satisfaction, certainly. Uh, another person really appreciates the fact that he doesn't have to travel to go find a trumpet teacher and finds that there's definitely cost savings, savings there. Um, again, I have a lot of people who are older in their retirement years uh, initially say, well, am I too old to start, you know, am I too old to learn the trumpet? Can I still play at this point in my life? And it happens all the time and, and people really enjoy, just enjoy playing the trumpet and, and learning to turn to turn a series of notes into actual music. Um, and again, I try to be very patient with everybody, understand that everybody's got different goals, and we can take this as serious or lightheartedly as you, as you like. And the last one is there. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, uh, it is, the registration is open right now. It's at etrumpetlessons.com slash live dash academy. Once more, etrumpetlessons.com slash live dash academy. And that's open right now. Uh, there's going to be an order form on there. I was working on that earlier, going through one final test, and there was a there was a confirmation letter that came through that had some kind of a reference to a link that says, click this link to confirm, and it's going to expire or something. It didn't make any sense, but I couldn't get rid of it. So <laughs> basically what's going to happen is as you register, I will, uh, I will collect your email address. I'll be in touch with you within 24 hours to schedule our first lessons, or rather we'll schedule our first uh, tech, you know, tech review preview. That'll be about a 15 minute session. We'll figure out a time that we can meet, something that fits both your schedule and my schedule, and, uh, and then we'll start our five pack of sessions. And again, after people complete that five pack, they can re-enroll for another five sessions if they like. So that's how that works. It's just uh, click a link. You don't, you can use uh, PayPal if you have a PayPal account. If you don't have a PayPal account, not a problem because you can use just your credit card. A couple of comments. Um, trying to get the money a little short. Yep, no worries, uh, Glenn. Anytime. Um, feel free to contact me. Contact me if uh, if the registration page is closed. A week out from now, probably is when that will come down. Um, Harry says, I hated the buzz approach because I couldn't do it. It happens all the time. It's a, it's a frustrating thing, and like I say, it's not something that's, that's a natural sound. Um, but I'm glad you're having success with it right now, Harry. Thanks for that, Thanks for that feedback. Um, it really is a matter of, and I like that analogy of, of the clenched fist with, with one finger that's relaxed. You know, it's, it's the idea that you've got this whole mass of, of muscle right around here. It's tight, but yet right there at the aperture, you want to keep that nice and, and supple. You know, a lot of people, and one of the reasons that I, that I wanted to do this presentation and, and share the information is because uh, a lot of people feel like, well, I'm, I'm missing out. I'm missing out on the, the secret to playing the trumpet <laughs> if, if I can't buzz. And that's, that's really not it. It's not the big secret. It's not like angels come down and start to sing. Um, it's just a, an approach that works for some people, but it doesn't have to. So... Um, all right, I'm going to say that's good. Thank you, everyone, for coming out here. Uh, you can reach me. I will be checking comments here again after we're logged off. Um, you can reach me via the contact uh, page at etrumpetlessons.com. Um, I'm very easy, easy to reach. So if you have any questions at all, definitely let me know. I'm going to be sending an email out uh, later for the replay. Obviously, I've got to do some editing for this to, to bring it all into one manageable um, presentation. So hopefully that won't take me too long. I hope to have that out tomorrow. And as soon as it is, I will send out an email so y'all will get that as well. Uh, thank you for joining me here. Glad it was useful. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for your patience uh, with my technical issues. Um, I may try it again. So uh, you're already here on, um, on Google+. Plus. So if you haven't already added me to a circle, uh, do that because that's the best way that I can 
that I can reach you again through this because then if I send if I message you on Google Plus that connects to your email box and it seems like a pretty a pretty uh, reliable way of of uh, reaching each other and I can get your messages as well if you're a Facebook user it's facebook.com slash e trumpet lessons if you don't already uh, like the Facebook page that's also another good way to stay in touch so between email Google Plus Facebook um, there's a Twitter account out there that's been abandoned somewhere so I haven't really jumped on that one too much but if you're a Twitter user check me out there and, and hit me up and say hey start tweeting and uh, if I get some of those I probably will so great good luck to all uh, thanks for joining me tonight I hope it's useful if you take some of these these ideas and the concepts the buzz and the no buzz let me know how it goes you know shoot me an email later about that that presentation you did even if you don't sign up for the live Academy I would love to hear your feedback um, especially if you're a buzz person and you try that no buzz approach and it it does something to your sound and, and helps you out I absolutely want to hear that so uh, great thank you so much for joining and uh, we'll catch you in a time. Take care.